let's do a main lesson today. Okay, in today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about comparing yourself to others. This is like the most common thing in the universe right now, especially with social media. We have a lot of people comparing themselves to others or thinking that other people maybe on the social media have something that they don't. They've got more success, fame, fortune, happiness, blah, blah, blah. And I'm inspired to do a lesson on this because I've seen how people can butt their heads against this. If they see someone in their immediate network doing something or, or moving and shaking, they compare themselves to the person, they can self-minimize and they're gonna, it, it, it can stop them from getting on with their life, getting on with the show and, 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 and building success for themselves. Now, if you're in the personal development space, you know that this is a kind of a hot topic at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of people giving their advice, their tips on, on how not to compare yourself to others, right? I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm not going to suggest don't go and compare yourself to others because it's not real. It's a fantasy. If I was here to say don't ever compare yourself to other people, that's not real. Find me one single human being on the face of the planet who doesn't compare themselves to other people, you won't find it. So to, to set someone up, to set up to set people up like that and say, don't compare yourself to others, it's a romantic notion, but it's not grounded in truth. It's not real. It's never happened. Go and find a single person, you won't find a person. It's part of the human condition to compare ourselves to others. And what I'm gonna suggest instead is that comparing yourself to others has benefits. There's benefits to doing that. Uh, because get this here, if this is you right here in the middle, guess what's gonna happen? There's a sort of a scale here. And this sort of represents time, and this is sort of the past, and that's sort of the future. Let's just say that this is the here and now, and this is you. There will be people in your life, in your network, that you perceive to have some extra skills, or some extra results, or some extra success. There will be people in your life that you look up to. This is normal, this is healthy, this is completely natural. Likewise, there are gonna be people, if you look closely, there will be people in your life that you know, you perceive in your perceptions that you have more empowerment than them, that you have more fame, more fortune, more success, more whatever it is. Take any area of life. There'll be people that you have, that have more than you in your perception and people that have less than you in your perception. These are the people who you feel that you're more empowered than, and these are the people who feel, you feel like they're more empowered than you. Now, if you want a cool exercise to try at home, what you might want to do is go through your life. Go back to when you're a kid, maybe when you're five years old, six years old, and put yourself here, because this is, remember, this is in the past, that's into the future, this is the here and now. If this is your past, maybe you're a kid here, guess what's gonna happen? When you were a kid, when you were five or six years old, there would have been people who you perceived at the time had more empowerment than you, who maybe you looked up to, maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was the cool kid at school. And at that time, when you were a kid, there would have been people in your life that you sort of looked down to, not that you're necessarily better than them, but you would have perceived yourself to have, you know what, I'm more powerful, more authoritative, maybe I'm older, maybe I have a more esteem in the social setting. All throughout your life, from when you're a kid to now, into the future, at every time along this timeline of your life, you will have people who are, you perceive to be above you, people who you perceive to be below you. This is comparison to others. That's why you'll never escape this, to try and say, don't compare yourself to others. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a complete teaching because no one's ever achieved it. Now, what I will say is this. We have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. We have that which we are consciously aware of and that which we are unconscious of. It's, we're sort of blinded to it in our perceptions. So here's what's gonna happen. If you are consciously aware, if this is the here and now, and you are consciously aware that a particular individual has more empowerment than you, more esteem, more fame, more fortune, more success, more happiness, blah, 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 and you're aware of that and you blind yourself to the people who perhaps that you've transcended, the people that you've done better than, you will have a lopsided perception and you'll look to the people and you think, well, they've got all this, I've got nothing. You'll be blinded to the people who you actually are more empowered than, who you are more successful than, and you'll have a lopsided perception and you'll think that you are lower perhaps than what you are in actuality. Likewise, if you're blinded to this and you think you're God's gift and you think that there's no one on the face of the earth who's as good as you, then you'll look down at everyone, you'll have a lopsided perception in the other direction and you'll think that you're better than everyone, you're God's gift, you'll have a sort of a sense of entitlement, you'll expect that everyone ought to look up to you and sort of a suck you off kind of thing like that and, and you'll be in a pride state and you look down. It goes both ways. Comparison to others goes both ways, but to, to, to avoid it altogether is not real. 
my advice is to keep a balance of people you look up to and people you, you know that you uh, have transcended, the people that you are more empowered than. That's sustainable and that's actually health. That helps you grow because people who are doing better than you help to inspire you to see what's possible for you. You don't want to avoid that. You don't want to, have, you don't want to shut that out and blind yourself to that. That's crazy. You want, you want to have the people here and if you're smart, you'll use them as mentors. See, it's a mindset shift between if people, someone's doing better than you, do you want to go and reach out to them and ask them, hey, what did you do? How can you help me? Because I can copy your success. I don't have to make the same mistakes as what you probably made. Compared to if you compete against them, if it's, it's a, sort of a flight or fight response, do you want to compete against them and try and tear them down and claw them down and have tall poppy syndrome? You know, when this person's doing better than me, I want to try and debunk their success. That's the, that's the two mindset polarities. You either use them as a mentor or you try and cut them down, debunk their success. It depends where you want to play the game of life, that's all. So having people in your life that you look up to, people who are perhaps further along the journey, more empowered than you, that's fantastic, that serves you. That keeps you humble, that keeps you grounded, and that keeps you hungry. And look, if you look to someone and it sort of <clears throat> gets in under your skin and you think, they've got this and they're doing that, and it inspires you to movement, it gets you moving, you need them in your life. You, you ought to write them a letter and say, thank you for inspiring me and letting me see, you know, giving me a glimpse of what's possible for me. Because the only reason it gets under your skin, by the way, is because you know that they're in your ballpark. Look, last year, 2016, Warren Buffett made $12.3 billion. He made $12.3 billion. That looks like this, right? I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Probably too low, golly gosh. Now, that's what $12.3 billion looks like. And if you're anything like me, seeing someone like a Warren Buffett do a $12.3 billion a year, it doesn't really get under my skin. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really make me, I don't really emotionalize it. You know why? Because it's such a big number, it's not even in my field of awareness. It's not even in my realm of that's a possibility for me. But you know what? There's people on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook now who are doing similar things to what I do. They're teaching and sharing and they have a program and they're helping people and they're making 10 million a year. That gets under my skin because I know, or at least in my perception, I have more awareness than them. I know more than them, but they're doing vastly more than what I'm personally doing. So that, I emotionalize that more and I sort of look up to them more than this because this is not even in my field of awareness. It's so far beyond where I'm at at this point in my life that it doesn't even register. So if there's someone in your circle of influence, maybe it's a brother or a sister or a friend, and they're getting under your skin because you're like, oh, they're doing so well, just know that the only reason you're emotionalizing that is because deep down within, you know that they are in your ballpark. They're highlighting you to a part of yourself that you might not have brought out yet, that you might not have acknowledged, and they're showing you what's possible for you. Because if you have a sibling, someone who were brought up in the same house, and they go and, do, go and hit success, that will, that will affect you more. Because deep down, you know you could have had what they had. You could have done what they've done. And perhaps they were more efficient and more effective at getting their goal, at isolating what they want to achieve, and then going after it and getting it. So if you have a friend, or you have a sibling, or someone you went to school with, and they're doing really well, and it sort of uh, gets under your skin, and you're comparing, you know that you're comparing yourself to them, just know that you're emotionalizing it because you know deep down, in the soul, you know that you could have what they have. And they're actually inspiring you to go for greater, to move to the next level, to move up to the next level. So my advice is if you have someone in your life like that, you wanna write them a letter, do, do them a, a Facebook message or send them a text message if you've got their number and send them a little message and say, hey look, I've been watching what you're doing. I'm really inspired by what you're up to. Congratulations, by the way, because you know what? They probably worked their ass off to get there. You wanna say thank you for inspiring me and letting me know, you know what, this is a potential because we went to the same school or we did this together and we were in the same boat at one stage and you've gone and done this and, and that's inspiring to me. You wanna say thanks for that. Uh, you don't wanna completely shut this down and sort of close your eyes and turn this off and don't ever compare yourself to others. That's, a, that's an incomplete teaching. That's not real life. So in summary, I'm not really gonna be promoting don't compare yourself to others. I know that's popular. In my experience, it's not real. I haven't met a single person. I've met millionaires now. I've met a deck of millionaires. I've met center millionaires. I've met the people with the fame and the fortune, the people at the top of their field. And guess what? They compare themselves to others. There's certain parts of their lives where they compare themselves to others. It's part of the human experience. It's normal. If you go through your life from childhood up until now, and every single year of your life, you'll know 
that there will be people who you looked up to, people who you looked down to. And if you can keep a balance of looking up to people and having mentors and looking down and being grateful for what you actually have achieved, you'll have gratitude for where you are, you'll have hunger because you'll know that there's more and you'll have a never ending journey of being grateful for where you've got to and also hungry for the next step. And that's what life's about. It's about enjoying the moment, being in the moment, being grateful for where you are, but then being hungry to go to the next step and having people in your life to inspire you to take the next step. My name is Lewis Smocker, and if you've enjoyed this video, if you got something from it, please consider sharing it with a friend or tagging a friend in because I, you know what, comparing yourself to others, I know a lot of people are dealing with this and, and they have a negative sort of connotation to it, probably because they've self-minimized, they're looking up to people and they think that they've got all the success, but they're really not acknowledging, you know what, there are people probably in their family, people in their friendship network, people they went to school with that they're doing so much better than and they're not acknowledging what they have achieved. So I'm always about acknowledging where you are, being hungry for the next step, and enjoying the moment, you gotta go with the flow. By the way, 12.3 billion in a year, you know if you divide that by uh, 365, divide it by 365, and then divide that by 24 hours in a day, that's 1.4 million dollars an hour. 1.4 million dollars an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Holy shit bags.